Oh yeah, so Dave Bishop's place here uh, at the mouth of uh, Potholes Coulee, some people know it as Ancient Lakes. Also a flood story for sure. Okay, so we're going to go up, uh, we'll go up the Ancient Lake side of the okay. Potholes Coulee and then we'll come down the Dusty Lake side. a bigger house than I thought he did. That's I think this house is new. Oh, really? Yeah, there's another house out here somewhere. Oh, okay. And there's wires. Uh, so when I take people on tours from uh, KB, I usually come as far up as here, a little bit right there. And I take them in the other side and down this side, but, so we're going to do it backwards. And these are uh, up ahead of us at the ancient lakes. And if you know wine in Washington, you know that there's an ancient lakes AVA, um, and this is uh, what it was named for, is these lakes right here. And Bill Brandt has a bunch of uh, vineyards uh, up on the left here, the hand side here, up on the, the cliffs. Bill Brandt actually has a lot of grapes in this area. The time for product placement. Here's our no, Bill no. Brandt wine. And they, you can, I don't know if you saw that, and maybe it's not on the camera, but the, the water coming down is irrigation runoff. So any water feeding these lakes is irrigation runoff. Straight ahead of us is a couple of waterfalls. They're coming out of these other lakes, the upper Quincy Lakes, and they're feeding uh, these ancient lakes. So, so you can see another one over there on the side. So Dry Falls is, is, for a good reason, a very famous place to visit, but this is another version of Dry Falls. Just a little a littler version, I think. Slightly smaller, but it's definitely the same story with curved cliffs, and there's actually a matching coulee next door. Yeah. And, uh, and potholes drilled into these uh, benches uh, by this amazing water. So this is now water, not coming down Moses Coulee, but this is the water that came over Dry Falls, came down, oh, look at that, oh my heavens. That's a uh, dusty lake, you can uh -huh. see the wind on it. Oh, That's man. why we get bounced around in here. It's a little windier here than it was up in uh, Wenatchee. And then the other thing I point, I remember pointing this out last time was uh, this cliff here, this is all columnar basalt here, and then there's an area near the top uh, the up, up further, and I'm not sure if the camera's going to get it. I it probably won't. But if, as you're looking down on the top of those basalt uh, pieces, you can see the pattern, yep. the hexagonal pattern. Uh, let's see, I'm going to fly right along the edge here, and maybe it'll get in the camera. Oh, I see them, yep. Yep, right up ahead, there's a good spot right there. Like they're made in a factory. Yeah. Look at how yeah. perfect those yeah. are. That's kind of neat. Giant, so there's that. Giant Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> yep, beautiful. Just avoid these wires over here. Oh yeah, there's some wires. Good idea. You're a pro. Well, I fly in this area a lot. I used to fly in there a lot more, but... So now we're uh, past the town of Quincy. The river again is in front of us. Uh, we're over the Babcock Bench still. There's some potholes under us. And we're headed, let's see, what's the next spot we'll head to? Um, I flew folks up to the Gorge Amphitheater once before, so I'm not going to do that again. Uh, but it does feature in one of your videos. Um, you have one of your videos shows a flood happening right behind the the stage, and it, it's just terrifying to watch. He's it, got such great, great um, uh, animations in there. So I'll I'll put a link to that in the either description or up in the um, video itself, Thank you so for you folks can look at it. It's uh, Nick on the Rocks is the series, and I, you know if you're interested in geology, um, uh, they're they're good. They're short. And they're good. So I know people like short stuff. I think we're up to two videos already for this one. So let's see. Well, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 an obvious, obviously a special place for music shows, etc. And probably uh, that's the premier spot for most people to be aware of this area by going to a show yeah, there sure. and being curious about what's behind the stage. And yeah, we, we, we did a simulation for the 14,000 year old flood, but we could have done one of the bigger floods that actually came over the stage, but we decided not to That's terrify not to people too viewers. much. Right. Oh yeah, this is a great spot to see these different levels of the layer cake, essentially. And if we drilled right now through the bottom of the river, we would go two miles before we got to the bottom of this German chocolate cake. That's how many lava flows are here. This is a major geologic story for much of the Pacific Northwest. And this must be, uh, well, this is, island here is probably some kind of a bar from the 
floods are very yeah. good. And then this, good. Uh, obviously, this is right in front of us. Yes. Um, I guess it's called Sunland. Sunland right? Estate. Okay, good. Yep, absolutely. And the camera's getting a lot of reflection because we're flying uh, towards it. The sun is kind of in front of us, but uh, maybe on the way back we'll talk about it some more. Well, the only chance I had to get over to West Park easily was a guy from Sunland named Gary who took me over there and, and the camera guy with the, was oh. one with his boat. And that was just such a treat. Now, this is another treat to be able to access this a different way. It pays to get stuff out there on the airway. Yeah. You know, you can yeah. make some friends that way pretty yeah. easily. That's what it's all about. Oh, wow, the water must be really low because that little bit of sand right there is not usually exposed. Yeah. yeah funky road coming down on the left here yeah. to Sunland and again that's another one of these gravel bars. If you've trained your eyes now you you know that that's light gray so that means that that sand and gravel was just dropped into that little side valley during the Ice Age flood. This is basically that's a bunch of loose gravel from northern yeah. Washington and northern Idaho if you can believe that. And they put a road on it. Put a road on it. Yeah that's a good thing. Let's see. I was going to show the sandbar up here where also Frenchman's Coulee is coming up. Sure. I'm trying to remember what we showed, uh, what we tried to show last time. Well, the, the, the thing that I like about Frenchman's Coulee that's different than what we just saw with uh, Ancient Lakes is a good look at the rock columns within the Rosa Lava Flow and these very unusual patterns. So if you want to swing through there, I can yeah. show that to you. Chip, we can do that. The columns fascinate people, and it's always frustrating as a teacher when you take people out on field trips because there's so many geometries in these columns that we just don't have an explanation for. The basic story is these columns form when the lava flow is sitting there starting to cool, and the inside of the lava is still red hot, but the outside has formed a black skin, and the skin starts to crack into those perfect stop sign shaped cracks. And then as the interior of the lava flow continues to cool, those cracks kind of work their way towards the middle of the full uh, flow, like a like a, a giant stop sign shaped cookie cutter going from the bottom up and from the top down. But when you get out here and really look at some of the details of these columns, the cookie cutter thing doesn't feel very satisfying. And I totally agree with them. And yet, we don't have an answer for some of these geometries, including this rose of flow. So let's, yeah, if we can get close to that, uh, uh, shadowy cliff and kind of zoom up along the side of it the, the, the light the lichen uh, right at this right level can great yeah, yeah. can you see that each column has what we call a pinch and swell i call it like oh, a yeah. giant crinkle cut french fry yeah. and nobody has been able to explain why this particular lava flow forms these columns that kind of do this zigzags in and out or in other words they pinch and swell but even stranger, and we might be able to see this when we swing around and see a few rock climbers uh, in the next coulee. I'm thinking they're usually up here. Okay. Sometimes they're on this. There's a camper parked over here, so I'm thinking there must be somebody on this. Well, those are the feathers right here. These giant lavas, uh, excuse me, these giant columns uh, in the Rosa flow. Yeah, we're Keep it down there. Oh yeah, there's some people at the base of the rock they there. Are. But if you wouldn't mind, Maria, right over the pit toilets here. No, oh, thank you. There we go. Sorry. I uh, mean, hi. I mean, whatever. <laughs> we got you. Like flipping us off. Probably. Um, if we go over straight ahead and up over, and then oh. if we swing to the right, I think okay. we'll see some climbers that are parked here. And we'll see this a diagonal pattern. So again, we're thinking of those crinkle cut right over there to yep, the right. Yep, we're gonna go over it and then make yes. a turn. Yes, I think so the light's gonna the be light. good for us to yeah, see. Yeah, the light will be Beautifully famous. done. So we're going right over another dry falls, another big waterfall. And now can you see how there's kind of a diagonal pattern to a lot of those crinkle cuts? We see some climbers at the base of that cliff. Oh yeah. Right in front of us. Yeah, I don't get too close. Oh, no, you're fine. Go across the... Uh, yes. Oh, beautiful shot of these Rosa columns, and yet we cannot explain those detailed geometries. Very cool. If one of your viewer has an idea, I'd love to hear it. Nobody, uh, the physicists have been working with this. A few geologists have tried to work with this. 
no, so, so the columns, fine, but why do they pinch and swell individually, and why do they, as a group, have this diagonal look to them? Great shot, thank you. Yeah, hopefully. Who knows? You really don't, oh, come on, you're so down on your camera now. Uh, I don't I'm know, sure I'm so, like, paranoid about this stupid nah, camera. Nah, 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 nah. Somebody, somebody responded, I need more cameras. It's like, how many cameras do you think I can put on a helicopter? How much money do you think I got for cameras? You're dancing as hard as you know. can. What, what are these people this want? Is, I do want to show the sandbar here, this yeah. uh, sand dunes here, because yeah. it's kind of weird. We're in Washington State, and there's a big sand dune. And uh, people go up in here, and I don't know what they do in here. Actually, we saw a big hole here last time. Yeah, that's uh, I right. I don't see it anymore. It was well, that's, somewhere. Well, that's that wind, you know? Yeah. That wind keeps working. But if it's so light colored, we know what that means, right? Yep. It's sand that came down the Columbia River. It has nothing to do with this dark lava that's nearby. So it's Columbia River sand that's been blown up and out of that valley. Oh, this is so fun. What a great, <laughs> a great time this afternoon in late September. This is the old road that used to go along the river. And when they put the dam further down, the Wanam Dam, uh, they flooded out the road and turned it into a boat ramp, which they is kind of sure cool. Did. Sure did. It's actually a decent boat ramp now. You can see the road continuing under the water. I don't know if you can see it, the white. Oh, God, I never noticed. That. Yeah. That's cool. That's because the water's so low right now. Wow. That's freaky. Yeah, it's, it's only when the water's really low that you see it. There's a group camp there, that thing. I don't know who owns that or what, but... So we're coming up on Vantage, which is going to be on the uh, right. We saw that tree last time. How far up was it? That's not it right there, is it? Uh, up on the top? We, yeah, we're close. If you think you see it, you might see it. Uh, this is the petrified forest of, of the Vantage area, and there's one standing petrified log that we had an easy time finding last year. You think you see it? Is it straight in front of us, like right there? Yeah, I, do. I think it's over I here. I think so too. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure what you see. Back. You might be seeing another see one. So there's little treasures to be found up here. Uh, some of them are petrified logs, and others are big granite boulders that were brought in by the Ice Age floods. But I really want to show you this this standing log, if we can find it as easily as we did last time when well, the camera wasn't working. Then. Turn around. Um, it was, it was, I don't know. Uh, we might have to approach it like we did last time. To yeah. Get our bearings. Let's, I'm going to go out as far as that, that ridge okay. and then turn around. Sounds like a plan. So again, we're up above the Ice Age flood, obvious erosion, but the floods did get this high. And the evidence for that are these big, these big granite boulders that are kind of perched all over the place that were brought in by icebergs and got dropped on these hillsides. I definitely don't think it was this far. I agree with you. Nice so, views going back the other way. Yes. You can see the whole Quincy Basin on the other side of the river there. Yes, you can. That filled up like a big clawfoot bathtub with flood water. <laughs> Um, yes, uh, yeah, your instincts are right on the mark. I was so proud that we could find it, find it so easily last night, but I think it's because we were over the museum and then heading this way, and that made more sense to me. But I think if we go over here... Okay. Where's the big draw? Is this the big draw? Well, it was just, Might be further. Just past a big draw. It was, I know it was walking distance from the museum, and I think we're a little beyond that right now. It's like watching a video of two people who can't find their car keys. And like, did you leave it in the... <laughs> where did you leave the car keys, honey? Oh, yeah, look how far we are from the bridge. We're pretty far out. Oh, that's so funny, because we did get right in front of it. Yeah. No, now I'm going to change my mind again, because I oh, think it's behind boy. us. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, we'll go around and one more so time. So if we try what we did before, which is basically... Start uh, at the museum. Yeah, and, and we can side. just kind of come right up this okay. bench, right, and then I think we'll have, we'll have luck. We don't have to go all the way down there. Nope, nope. So. Okay, make my U-turn right here. Okay. So the river is, of course, dammed up here. The river is a, a series of dams along the river. And uh, the Wanapum Dam makes this lake, uh, which is actually quite long. And over here, it's quite wide. Oh, this is great. Yeah, right right here. We'll just follow this lip. And so you can see some footpaths out here. This is a great place to hike in the springtime with the wildflowers. 
and, before the snakes. Uh, before, oh, wow, what the hell? Snakes won't, <laughs> snakes won't bother you. They just let you know if you're in the area, and then you kind of start walking a different direction. Okay, so this is perfect, great stuff. We're up on top of the Grand Ronde Lavas, and I think if we come right, right around the corner up here, I think we're going to find our log. Okay. Our standing petrified wood log. It was and, very big. Which, and it's just one particular horizon that has all of these logs. Like a big draw. Yes. No? And uh, there it is, straight ahead. Do you see oh, it? Oh, I see it now. So, this has been famously featured a, fo a few old school postcards. I can't speak right now because I'm excited to see this old friend because it takes a lot of effort by uh, <laughs> leg power to get out here. But do you see right down in front of us? Yep, I'm gonna go right over the top of it. Beautiful petrified log that's in growth position. Now that's a bit of, oh, this is so cool. Uh, that should get a good shot. And then we'll turn around and get it from the oh, other side. Oh, nice. So we filmed a short two-minute geology video out there to, to, to emphasize the significance of that standing log. Most of the logs are laying down, they're entombed in lava, and we're quite sure that this standing log was also entombed at the base of a lava flow, but the lava flow has been eroded away, and almost against the odds, this guy's standing here like this. Oh, I, I gotta shut up and just look at this. Hang on. <laughs> Go right over the top, I can buzz a log. There we go. Oh, that's a pretty big log. I mean, making me want to land up here one day and get out and take a closer look, but thank, not today. Thank you for that. That, yeah. was, that was No, I wanted moment. to see that again, too. That was too. a special moment. And thankfully, that log is within the boundary of the state park. And I say thankfully because yeah, that's supposed to mean it's protected. It. So, uh, if something happens uh, to that log, I'm going to blame it on one of your viewers, okay? Uh-oh. Because we just revealed it. Okay. The, uh, these cliffs, I have seen a bighorn sheep along these cliffs. I believe it. And uh, we probably flew over a dozen of them looking for the log and not looking for sheep. <laughs> um, but I've seen them along the cliffs. And anybody who, again, watches my videos pretty regularly, you might have seen the one where I video the sheep in my yard. Same, the same animals are here. Same kind of cliffs, really. So I'm not seeing any of them. So we're going to go down to the gap, which is up ahead. Last time we went as far as Vantage, and then we went inbound to Ellensburg, but we're not going to do that today. Um, we're going to go down to the gap, which is that gap in the river up ahead. That's uh, right, right north of uh, Mattawa. And uh, the mountain on the left side is called Saddle Mountain. And we're going to go do some exploring over there, which may or may not make it into this video. It might be in the other video. Sure. So, but we can still talk, or you can talk. I don't. I have nothing else to say. I do have one thing to say. Is there? Go for it. There's a great. Um, um, if you have a helicopter and you're looking for a place to get a burger, uh, there's a restaurant over here on the side, uh, the vantage side of the freeway. It's called Blustery's, and they don't seem to have any problem with you landing a helicopter in their parking lot. Great. Um, so. I do that occasionally. 